Yo, what's up, peeps? You know what it is. It's your guy, Andre, aka Real Dre Mo, Beer, Beer, and Sports. And we don't take too much bullshit around here. We tell you what the real is. And I've seen all of y'all over the past few months struggling, battling over a lot of shit. I tell you a few things I'm tired of that don't even fucking matter. That Jordan LeBron debate, you can get that the fuck out of here. That's a waste of time. But you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Uh, Trey Young, eh. We we kind of wore off of that, right? We on some other shit. We talking about your man's out there in Arizona now, right? Phoenix should clearly pick him, but they talking about some other shit, which is outlandish. So clearly, if you're Phoenix, you should be picking Deontay or Deandre. You you gotta come on, man. Well, let's, but you know what? Let me let, let me look at it. Let me look at it. Let me let me look at it, and I'll take a guess at who's going to go. I'll take my guess at who's going to go top draft. Y'all can disagree or whatever. Y'all might feel a, a different way than I feel. But I feel like homeboy from Arizona is going to be it. DeAndre Ayton is going to be the number one. I feel like after that, Michael Porter Jr. should be number two. But he had that injury. Trey Young should be higher. Marvin Bagley should be higher. But when people are picking it of the top 100 prospects, they choosing Luke Donna Donichich. I get that to an extent, right? We we have an affinity right now for um, small forwards slash shooting guards, but pretty much small forwards that can pass the rock, shoot and do all things or whatnot. My thing is, just because he's balling like that in Real Madrid or in all Euro League doesn't mean he's going to ball like that in the NBA. Although I have been very impressed with the improvements that FIBA has made. But at the same time, man, we get we get 16-year-olds like LaMelo that go over to Europe and watch them grown men. So either LaMelo's a beast or maybe it ain't a whole bunch of beasts in Europe. We don't know yet. And a lot of these European prospects haven't panned out the way we thought they would, especially when we draft them high. I mean, let's not forget Michael Oluwa Candy. Poor Singer is a solid, but we'll see. We still waiting. So I don't know. I, if you're Phoenix, you got to be a fool to not draft Deontay Aiden. You shouldn't be talking about trading that pick for anybody. Point blank, period. You need that at the rim. Whereas the second pick. You can kind of pick anybody out of the rest of this bunch and be fine. That's my personal opinion. But because the rest of these guys, we talk about small forwards and guards, the uh, college, high school, AAU, overseas is shitting out small forwards and guards like nothing because everybody's trying to copy LeBron and Chris Paul or Steph Curry. So you get a lot of them all the time offered to you. But very rarely do you come across true centers. And I think that the NBA is going to come back to a day of true centers. And they're going to dominate. I still say to this day when people are talking about um, how dominant the Golden State Warriors are. I don't believe that they would be as dominant against the 01 02 Lakers. Because I think Shaq would be the anomaly there. That's my opinion. I think that the Ron Harpers and the Kobe's of the world, would be like the backcourt in LA, would give Clay Thompson and Steph enough trouble to disrupt them. But I don't think Steph is going to play any defense because he standardly doesn't. To give Kobe or anybody else, or Derek Fisher or anybody else in that backcourt any trouble. And then at the end of the day, there's no answer for Shaq. The big man is going to come back, and De- DeAndre is, is, a, is a solid player, man. I mean, this is a guy that went to Balboa City, out of San Diego, you know, you know don't call me biased, because I'm a San Diego guy, but he really is a ball. He's a true baller, man. At the end of the day, he's actually from Nassau, but he, you know, moved to San Diego and played there. I think he's a true baller. I think he's a true center. He's got a seven-foot one, 250. I think he needs to gain some weight. I would hope that he gains some weight and turns that into muscle. And then Phoenix might have them something to protect the rim. Because as much as I like Booker, Devin Booker is amazing on the offensive end. He's trash on defense. There's no real defensive effort. His defensive effort looks about as bad as James Harden's. 
And that whole series that we're talking about right now would be totally different if James Harden had put forth defensive effort. But that's not in the nature of uh, how he plays necessarily. So, initially, before we got into that, we started talking about this Jordan versus LeBron thing. To me, it makes no sense to discuss Jordan versus LeBron because they played in two different eras. The amount, the number of defensive uh, player of the year, like all defensive teams that Jordan made, I do not believe he would have made in this era. I think he made it in that era because there were nobody could really score. They couldn't make shots. Those guys weren't great at making buckets, if we're to be honest. Jordan scored 63 against Boston in that one series in the first round in which he lost, and he didn't make a three-point shot the whole time. I don't think Jordan would have been able to guard these guards the way he guarded Craig Elo or Mark Price. These are much more talented guards and small forwards today. But Jordan would have made all defensive team a few times, but it would not have been 10 times the way he did during the era. Guys who miss shots make you look better as a defender because they miss those shots, when in reality, those dudes in that era couldn't shoot. The great majority of them couldn't hit the side of the barn. LeBron, can he build a case against against Jordan for GOAT? No, because there's no such fucking thing as GOAT. If there really was a such thing as greatest player of all time, we'd be honestly talking about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who holds most of the records that Jordan did not catch, include, except for the six rings. Jordan did catch that. So, essentially, if we're really going stat for stat, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the greatest player ever. And then Jordan fans will say, what about the rings? And I'll say, okay, well, if we're only talking about rings, Robert Ory got seven. More importantly, Bill Russell got 11. So we can't really adjust for any of those anomalies from era to era. I think it's useless. The truth is Jordan was the greatest player of his era because I can't compare to Kareem to Jordan's era or even Magic because Jordan really came at the end of Magic's era and Magic came at the end of Kareem's era and Kobe came at the end of Jordan's era to start a new era and LeBron came at the end of Kobe's era to start a new era. Many argue that uh, KD is coming at the end of the LeBron era to start a new era. That could be true, too, but we'll see. And at the end of the day, we already see the new guys coming up to try to start a new era. It makes no sense to compare eras because the rules change and the players change in different eras. How can we compare LeBron's defense at 34 to Jordan's defense at 34? Jordan's guarding guys who can't shoot. LeBron's guarding in a league where everybody can shoot. Seven foot centers are busting the tray. And that's consistently. That was not happening during the Jordan era. I've seen both eras and one era is more talented than the other. And this era is more skilled and talented than that particular era. Jordan though, just so we make this clear, Jordan could play in any era. You put him in and be a beast. Magic Johnson can play in any era and he would be a beast, a great. LeBron James could play in any era and he would be a beast, a great. Same goes for KD. The greats transcend eras. Point blank, period. The real key is when we're arguing the role players. The role players from that 90s era couldn't make buckets. The role players from this era, man, they knock down buckets like it ain't nothing consistently. But that is what makes that 96 Bulls team a little bit special because they were better at making buckets than the other teams in that era. But they weren't great at it. They weren't like these guys now. I know we love nostalgia and we love to fill away and we need to fill away. But the truth is, these are two different eras. It's useless to compare them. What we need to do is enjoy what we're looking at now and respect what we saw before. Such is life. Jordan was the greatest, most dominant player of his era. LeBron James is the greatest, most dominant player of his era. I appreciate y'all listening to this episode. We about to get deep into the playoffs in the next episode. And y'all ain't gonna like what I have to say because I got some probably some different opinions on the Warriors and Rockets and the Cavs and Boston than y'all do. Peace, man. Thank y'all for listening to Beer, Beer, and Sports. Oh, by the way, shout out to my people, man. Tony Snow over there at 5150 Barbershop. Kingdom Fades, man. Great barbershop. Dope stuff.
in the next episode, I'm going to put you on to some uh, African beers that I got sent with those companies as soon as they uh, send the next set. We good to go, man. Hashtag Beard Beer and Sports. Peace.